Om 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 Oh, hello. You just caught me during my morning meditation. During these stressful times, it's nice to just sometimes relax and forget about it all. Just don't worry about what's going on all around. I hope you're having a nice time at home in quarantine and not getting too stressed. So um, let's have a think about today's episode. The object we're going to talk about in today's episode is almost never even noticed. It's in practically every home, but people don't really even see it. They walk right past. It's also a kind of an object that is practically never even needed. You probably never even need it. But if you ever do actually need it, it's very important that you have it. The object we're going to talk about today and explore the science behind how it works is the smoke alarm. Here is the smoke alarm we're going to be looking at today. Like we've done in our previous videos, a good way to figure out how something works is take it apart, look what's inside and try and use your best judgment. So we'll start by opening this normal everyday smoke alarm to see what's inside. The first thing we see here is three 3 volt batteries. That means we have 3, 6, 9, 9 volts going through this. Now I know that 9 volts can't give me any sort of a shock so it's safe to carry on but you can always remove the batteries if you're not sure. But never ever do anything like this taking apart electrical equipment without someone who's qualified to do so. Someone, an engineer, a scientist, an electrician, something like that. So anyway let's keep looking around. We have here we have some things these are called resistors these little coloredy things. We have some transistors here and here with a little diode there these are called capacitors now don't worry if you've never seen these before we might go into them in a later video we have an led here we have this white kind of a cone shaped structure with a metal at the back this is actually a type of speaker and then what we're most interested here is this you see what it says and see the symbol radioactive you might have seen that symbol before in movies or places like that this means there's a radioactive element in here americium 241 it's a source of nuclear radiation and it's right in here in this smoke alarm what do you normally think of when you think of nuclear radiation well it's not usually like that Nuclear radiation can be really dangerous, but lots of people really get scared by it when it's not necessary. If you understand nuclear radiation, and if you're trained about it, and you know what you're doing, it's not so scary because you know the proper precautions to take, and you know the type of radiation that's harmful, and the type of radiation that's not harmful at all. I'm going to try to explain nuclear radiation to you in a way that makes sense. But before I can really explain it and get inside here, we need to understand more about atoms. So let's do that right now. And we're going to explain atoms using magnets. So I have a magnet here. I've painted one side of it blue and one side of it red. We usually talk about magnets having a north pole and a south pole. Yeah. In this case, we're going to say that magnets have a positive end and a negative end. Okay, positive and negative. So when two magnets come together, we should all know that if we put two positives beside each other, it's going to push away, like so. See that? The positives don't want to be connected to each other. They're going to push away. The negatives don't want to be connected to each other. It's going to push away. But the negative and the positive are always attracted to each other. Okay? And you can see that adding multiple magnets to each other just makes one magnet. These individual magnets I've made are just made of multiple magnets stuck together. Okay, so remember that we can have positive charge and we can have negative charge, just like the positive and the negatives we talked about in our electricity. So I want you to imagine now that we could think of the positive end of a magnet and the negative end of a magnet, and we could somehow break it apart into just the negative parts and just the positive parts. 
It's not actually possible to do that, but for our demonstration we're going to have, I want you to imagine negatively charged particles and positively charged particles. They would act just like either ends of a magnet. Okay? Imagine that. Every single object is made of atoms. The wood in the table, the flesh of my hand, the plastic here, the metal here, the air in the room, it's all made of atoms. Atoms are the smallest amount of a substance that's still that substance. Well, what does that mean? Imagine a little bar of gold, yeah? And you chop it in half, it's still gold. Chop it in half again, it's still gold. Keep doing that until it's really tiny. Then look at a microscope and chop it even more until you get to such an infinitely tiny amount that you're just left with one atom. That's what an atom is, the tiniest amount of something. Now, for a really long time, people thought that you couldn't get any object smaller than an atom. But scientists found out many years ago that if you break an atom apart, you find even smaller particles. Every single atom looks something like this. Okay, the only difference between the different types of atoms is they have more and more of these particles in the middle and more and more of these particles on the outside. There's also a third particle we're not going to talk about today. We can just think about it like so. These particles in the middle, you can see, they're positively charged. We've coloured them red. Just think about the red end of the magnet, that positive end of the magnet. These particles here are negatively charged. They behave like the other end of the magnet. So that means these blue ones are attracted to the red ones and vice versa. Now the names we use for these are the red positive particles we call protons. Think of pro for positive. These blue negative particles we call electrons. So every single atom is made up of a cluster of protons yeah, being orbited by electrons. These electrons go round and round and round, round and round and round, just like how the planets orbit the sun. Think of it like that. Now we understand what an atom looks like on the inside. Well, what's this got to do with nuclear radiation? The type of nuclear radiation we're talking about today is called alpha decay. And what is that? Alpha decay is just when two protons are ejected from the centre of the atom. OK, so now you understand what an atom is made of, protons, electrons, positive and negative, and you understand what alpha decay is, that type of nuclear radiation that just pushes out these positively charged particles. So you can see that it's a way of creating negative charges and positive charges that are just floating around in space. What's that got to do with making our, um, our smoke alarm work? Well, if we want to figure that out, we need to open it up a little bit more. Now, what I'm about to do cannot be done by someone who's not qualified to do it. I'm going to open this up and look at the nuclear material inside. Okay, you shouldn't do this at all. Okay, but I'm going to do it here because I know it's safe and I know what I'm doing. Inside here, see this tiny little circle, that tiny little dot in there? That is a tiny amount of americium-241, a radioactive material. And it's undergoing alpha decay right now at this moment. So can you imagine those little red particles we talked about, those positively charged particles? They're being pushed out of that americium-241 all the time. They're flying all around here, but we can't see them. Let's imagine our americium-241 undergoes alpha decay. Those two protons go flying through the air. Eventually, they're going to find an air atom and knock off one of the electrons because they move so fast. Now you have electrons and protons moving through the air. How does this detect smoke? Well, there's a metal plate here and it's connected up to our batteries. So those, when those um, positive particles come out here, they collide with the atoms of our air, yeah, and they knock off those electrons. So those positive particles are going to get attracted to this metal plate because it's connected to the negative terminal of our battery. So those positive particles jump here. The negative particles are going to get attracted to this plate. Let's take a closer look at that. Ouch! That means you're going to jump all the positive particles here, all the negative particles here, and that is a flow of electricity. When you have these particles that they're positively and negatively charged and they're moving through metal, that's electricity. Now we're going to go into electricity in more detail later, but for now all you need to understand is those positive and negative charges are moving to these different metal plates. Now that's going to happen all the time when air moves through here, but if smoke moves through here, if we get this chamber filling up with smoke, 
suddenly those particles start sticking Ow. to the smoke. It's in the way. Those bits of smoke are quite large. So the positive particles don't get here. The negative particles don't get here. The electricity doesn't flow. That sends a signal to our electrical circuit here and it tells our speaker to go off. So once again, those smoke particles stop the positive particles getting to here and the negative particles getting to here. And that sends a signal to our speaker to start beeping. It's all due to nuclear radiation. Wouldn't be possible without it. All right, so now we know that there's a source of nuclear radiation probably right there in your home, but it's not going to harm you. The only way this americium 2 for one can harm you is if you touch it or if you eat it. So don't touch it with your hands and don't eat it, okay? It can't harm you when it's at a distance like that. That's why I'm using a pencil, not touching it with my hands. So thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hope you learned a little bit about nuclear radiation. We'd like to go in more depth into electricity in a later episode. And um, the diagrams we saw of atoms, they were just approximations of atoms. We didn't go into much depth on what the atoms really look like. They were just approximations. We might do that later on in another video. Bye-bye, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.